Kia is stepping up a gear in its EV offensive with this stylish EV6 battery-powered mid-sized performance saloon. This car has pavement presence, the potential of a decent 316-mile driving range and an uber-sophisticated cabin, which challenges the premium makers for style and quality. There's even a super high-performance GT derivative. This is, in short, a car that rivals need to take very seriously indeed. So far, Korean maker Kia's offerings have been worthy, sensible, good value and, whisper it, rather dull. But that changes right here, right now, with this car, the EV6. In this case, the idea is to reinterpret full electric technology for the affordable part of the mid-sized market in a sporty, desirable fashion. Don't think e-Nero or Soul EV. Instead, think Polestar 2 or Tesla Model 3. That's quite a challenging brief for a manufacturer not positioned as a premium brand, but Kia has gone about it with enthusiasm. The brand's developed an all-new eGMP platform for this EV6 and ready to top EV6 GT high-performance model for the very top of the range with a Porsche Taycan-like 577 bhp on tap. Mainstream EV6 models will be more accessible, targeted not only at Tesla and Polestar, but at sportier versions of cars like the Volkswagen ID4 and the Skoda Enyaq IV. No question then, this is a very important car that really shows Kia shifting gears in EV development. From the mediocre Soul EV of 2014 to the competent but rather vanilla e Nero of 2018 to this, a car whose reflection you might admire in shop windows with Hyundai Motor Group charging technology rivaled only by super luxury EVs from Porsche and Audi. Barstool industry experts will tell you that the EV6 is simply a Hyundai Ioniq 5 in a different frock. But Kia says not, claiming that the two models are very different in concept and have nothing but a chassis and a bit of shared technology in common. In a decade's time, the Korean maker reckons we'll be talking about the EV6 as the car that changed the Kia brand. Really? To find out the truth here, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. So what's the driving experience going to be like in an EV6? Well, an unnecessary and unnecessarily cheery jingle greets you as you get behind the wheel, which is all a bit Korean. Unlike other EVs that sense your presence and don't need starting, this one requires that you push the big EV branded starter button that's angled towards you on the higher part of this jutting lower centre console. The digital instrument screen then springs to life and you're rewarded with a green ready to start message on the right side of the display. With the all clear given and no handbrake switch to deal with, it's only necessary to switch this silver rotary gear selector dial to the right into D. What lies in store? Well, that depends a little on the variant you've chosen. There are two in the mainstream range, both using a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. The base rear driven model has only just enough power, 226 bhp, to make this two ton EV feel business like away from rest. The sprint to 62 mile an hour time for that base variant is 7.3 seconds, but 350 newton meters of torque isn't really quite enough for a contender this heavy. The spec of this all wheel drive dual motor test model is much more like it. Here, the 165 kilowatt rear electric motor fitted to all EV6s is joined by a smaller 74 kilowatt motor at the front, boosting total output to 321 bhp. That provides for 62 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds and nearly twice the amount of pulling power, 650 newton meters, on the way to the 114 mile an hour top speed that all versions of this Kia share. It doesn't actually feel that fast on first acquaintance, which for us is a good thing. The delivery of torque and speed pleasantly linear and combustion-like. If you want an EV6 that does kick you in the back away from rest, 
Kia will attempt to sell you a top GT model with the same battery and all-wheel drive combo, but a twin motor output uprated to 577 bhp with a thumping 740 newton meters of torque. You don't really need that GT model's manic speed, rest to 62 miles an hour in just three and a half seconds, en route to 162 miles an hour, and you don't really need its standard adaptive damping system either, because the passive frequency selective mechanical springs that feature here, which can't be upgraded, combine with the multi-link independent rear suspension to produce an actually very well judged quality of ride over poor surfaces. Even with the largest 20 inch wheel size we have here. It's certainly better than you get with this car's close cousin, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which is strange because compared to that car, Kia has stiffened up the front and rear spring rates, as well as increasing the available damping force. That also enables the EV6 to corner better than its Korean stablemate with noticeably less body movement, aided by the low centre of gravity and thicker front and rear anti-roll bars. With the top GT performance model, you also get a limited slip differential to further improve things. No EV6, though, can completely mask its sheer weight and width, and this one, though a little lighter than comparable VW Group EVs, can't do so well enough to qualify as any kind of handling class leader, despite Kia's sporting pretensions for it. It's way better at speed through the turns, though, than we thought it would be, especially in this all-wheel drive form with its rear-biased setup, which surprised us after we'd read the early, unpromising test reports. Clearly, all the development work from Albert Biermann's drive development team at the Nürburgring Nordschleife racetrack has reaped some benefit. What doesn't seem to have been properly addressed as part of that programme is the steering. Turning the wheel gives you the same sort of gloopy feedback you get stirring a bucket of soft cement with a long stick. And it doesn't improve much if you flip it out of the two everyday drive modes, eco and normal, into sport. These three settings primarily focus on changing throttle response and the feel is discernibly different with each one, but ultimately, Eco is too sleepy and Sport too sharp, which means it's one of those things you'll probably try once, then for most of the rest of the time, simply leave it in its best all-round normal mode. Unless you're driving your EV6 during colder months, in which case you might find it useful to activate the winter mode, selectable from the EV menu on the centre screen, that softens the power delivery to make driving in slippery conditions easier. Probably a more useful set of modes is found with the six available brake regeneration settings, most of which can be operated by these steering wheel paddle shifters. You have to keep resetting things every time you start the car up, which is irritating, but otherwise the setup works well and in its most extreme form offers eye pedal driving, where deceleration off throttle is so arresting that you hardly ever need to use the brakes, though when you do press the middle pedal, you'll find the response linear and satisfyingly predictable. You might, of course, prefer to let the regeneration system software make energy recuperation decisions for you. There's a screen selectable auto setting for that. Get your regeneration regime right and you stand a chance of getting somewhere near the published combined cycle drive range figures from the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery, which vary from 328 miles for more affordable rear-driven models to the 300-mile reading achievable by this all-wheel drive version with the big 20-inch wheels. Like most EVs, this one feels most in its element on the highway, and this would indeed certainly be a relaxed conveyance for longer trips, though as so often in EVs, all the absence of engine noise does is to highlight things you probably wouldn't normally hear. In this case, a bit of wind noise above 60 miles an hour. There's no silly selectable EV soundtrack option like you get from Ford and BMW models in this segment, but in this top spec form, the EV6 does offer an active sound design feature that more subtly gives audio feedback through the stereo speakers that rises and falls with the perambulations of electric motor output via three different so-called soundscapes. 
Fortunately, you can turn it off. More useful technology lies in the required level of semi-autonomous tech that customers will be expecting for this kind of money. In this case, a Highway Driving Assist 2 setup that with its top GT Line S level of spec uses radars around the car to adjust the distance to vehicles ahead and centre the car in its lane. On the highway, the car can even overtake autonomously, a click of the indicator stalk moving it into an adjacent lane. All you have to do for all these functions to work is to keep your hands firmly on the wheel. And in summary, well, Hyundai may currently offer the Hyundai Motor Group's fastest models with its fiery N-Series, but Kia apparently wants it to be known going forward as the conglomerate's sportiest brand. That ambition has driven development of this EV6 and made it a surprisingly complete EV package. More work's needed here with future Kia EVs if the company is to take on Europe's best head-to-head. -head. But in this EV6, Kia has made a promising start. In Kia's own words, the idea here is to make a bold statement. Well, courtesy of the brand's latest Opposites United design philosophy, that's what we've got. It's all very angle sensitive. Not everyone will like it. And for mass sales, the company will certainly have to produce less divisive designs than this. If, as planned, all its cars are to be fully electric by 2035. Still, it's appropriate that as the Korean maker's first dedicated EV, this car stands out and it's certainly quite different from its equally unusual looking close cousin, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. In the pictures, and to a certain extent on film, it looks like a mid-sized five-door hatch, but in the metal, it's more the crossover that Kia claims it to be and larger in reality than you expect from perception. A lot larger, actually, about as long and wide as something like an Audi Q5, but a lot more purposeful, courtesy of this swept-back windscreen and bold rear haunches, creating a wedge-shaped look that Kia's design chief, Luke Donkervodka, suggests was influenced by the classic Lancia Strata sports car. No, we can't see that either. The wheels are pushed right to each corner, emphasising the strangely short nose and the long rear overhang. In between, there are flush-fitting door handles and a character line that runs along the bottom of the doors, curving upwards towards the rear wheel arches, visually elongating the profile of the car. There's a sloping C-pillar with an integrated black glossy insert, which gives the effect of widening the window glass. Plus, of course, there are big wheels, either 19 inch or, as in this case, 20 inches in size. The front looks either a little weird or rather racy, depending on your perspective. At least there's no ugly grill blanking plates like on some other EVs. The nose instead decorated with Kia's digital tiger face, an evolution for the electrified era of the previous tiger nose grille. It's flanked by LED headlights with a sequential dynamic light pattern. And further down, a low air intake visually widens the front of the car, channeling air underneath its flat floor. Even more unusual is the rear end, with its tail design being of the aerodynamic cam style used to distinguish old 60s sports cars like the Aston Martin DB6. Two spoilers feature, the larger one with these unusual side-mounted ears. This channels air down towards the raised lower spoiler that sits on top of this rather unique LED light cluster. It's all deliberately different because what sits underneath is deliberately common. The all-electric E GMP platform that underpins not only this car and its Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Genesis GV60 cousins, but will also undergird a whole host of future Kia, Hyundai and Genesis EV models. Time to take a look inside. These flush fitting handles springing out to greet you as you approach this top spec model. Now you might wonder what you're going to get here because the industry is currently divided on how futuristic an EV in this class should feel in the cabin. In the segment, there's everything from conventional, the Polestar 2, and conventional with wacky finishing, like the Volkswagen ID4, 
to completely futuristic, like the Hyundai Ioniq 5. So which path has Kia chosen here? Its own is the answer, and there's every chance you might like it. You're very aware that you're behind the wheel of a new era EV, but quite a few old-style knobs and buttons have been retained, and you don't immediately feel that you'll have to spend hours perusing the handbook before you can operate anything. The driving position is lower and more car-like than you'd expect from a crossover, and the steering column's at quite a sharp angle, so it all feels a bit different, but nothing you couldn't quickly adjust to. As is the current trend, two giant 12.3-inch screens linked together for the infotainment and instrument displays, but your initial attention will probably be taken by this two-part floating centre console and by the fact that it doesn't join onto the dashboard ahead, which adds a very spacious feeling here. There's plenty else, of course, to attract comment. Kia's managed to design a flat bottom steering wheel that doesn't look remotely sporty and fill the cabin with all kinds of quite interesting materials without any of them feeling especially premium. Still, on the plus side, quite a few of them are sustainable. You sit on very comfortable premium relaxation seats, part trimmed in vegan leather, and Kia says that the sections of the dash and centre console that are clad in recycled plastics account for 107 500 millilitre plastic water bottles for every EV6 made. There are some nice design touches too. This dashboard doesn't need the usual lower centre stack because it doesn't have to accommodate separate climate control buttons. Not because these have been hidden away on the upper touchscreen, though you can find them there, but because this clever, narrow, multi-mode display flicks from infotainment monitor shortcuts to ventilation functions at the press of a button. The arrangement works well. You might be less enthused by this charcoal plastic fashion fascia with its striated angled lines or by the white finishing used for the doors, the lower centre console and the seat sides, which of course will quickly grime up with use. But the blue hatched centre section around the mid-level vents looks smart and the large circular shift-by-wire gear selector dial falls nicely to hand. These smart Alcantara-style upholstered powered heated seats we mentioned earlier don't feature the retractable calf rests that ease out from beneath the seat base, as in an Ionic 5, so you can really stretch out, but they do recline right back so that you can comfortably nod off for 40 winks while powering up at your local charging station. As for that two-part floating centre console, well, predictably, it's nothing like as beautifully finished as the similarly designed piece of interior furniture you'll find in a BMW iX, nor can it slide back and forth as the universal island centre console between the seats as it does in an Ionic 5. But as a piece of design, it really works well, bringing functions you'll frequently use, start button, heated seat selectors, even a wireless charging mat on which your mobile phone can sit exactly where you'd ideally want them. Right, let's talk screens and start with this central one. As usual with Hyundai Motor Group models, it has two main home screen pages. One simple uncluttered one with a battery graphic, range, temperature, audio and navigation, or you can swipe across to a display full of little icons, all of which can be moved about to your preferences, much like your phone. You can also create a split screen format, say with EV and audio info. However you choose to view, there's lots of really neat stuff here, though unfortunately the usual Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone projection isn't of the wireless kind, and the screen's built-in dynamic voice recognition system voice control doesn't seem capable of finding things like radio stations, only media and destination inputs. Screen features don't always load quite as quickly as you might like either, but Kia says it's developing a software patch to speed things up and prevent system crashes. Navigation routes are calculated using a powerful server located in a Blue Link cloud, which is continually updating itself with charging station locations. And on that subject, there's a comprehensive EV section for your charging regime with a beautifully concise home screen that tells you at a glance pretty much everything you really need to know. 
Climate controls, as mentioned earlier, have been separated out into this lower multi-mode display, but you can still access climate and heating and ventilation icons on the centre screen for more detailed ventilation control, including the brand's usual and very useful auto dehumidify and auto defog functions, plus a smart ventilation option that automatically detects and controls the cabin temperature and humidity level. Other centre screen features include voice memo so you can dictate to the car as you drive and a quiet mode that restricts the volume of the stereo speakers and plays audio output only through the front ones so the kids can get to sleep on longer trips. Kia Live services deal with the live charging station info we referenced earlier as well as giving you traffic and parking info and you can use a blue light filter to make the display colours cooler or warmer or change the complete background layout colour from black to a rather futuristic looking white. The six speaker audio system fitted to mainstream models isn't especially impressive but stretch to top GT Line S trim and you'll be able to use this monitor as your access point to the excellent 14 speaker Meridian sound setup we've been trying here. Anything you can't find on this central curved touchscreen navigation screen and also a few things that you can will probably be located on the complementing customizable cluster driver display to the right of it viewed through the flat bottomed two spoke vegan leather stitched wheel with its rather hidden lower left side driving mode button. This isn't one of those screens that can be configured every which way and its main layout interface shared with the Ionic 5 is rather strange. The best description we've seen likens it to a digital bit of old corrugated roofing sheet. There are rather too many tiny digits along its lower level for things like battery charge, chosen recuperation and drive modes, temperature and energy consumption. But once you've adjusted to all of that, this setup works pretty well. And if you've stretched to this top trim level, you get neat little circular rear camera screens that flash up on either side of the instrument cluster when you activate the indicators. With the same top trim, it works in conjunction with an augmented reality head-up display setup that projects all kinds of key journeying information onto the windscreen in front of you as you drive. What else? Well, your all-round view is fine at the front, but to the rear it's somewhat compromised by the huge rear pillars and rising window lines, so it's good that a rear view camera and rear parking sensors are standard across the range, while mid-range GT Line trim adds front sensors too. This top GT Line S version includes an excellent 360 degrees bird's eye view surround camera and can even be parked remotely by key fob buttons while you stand outside, which looks very impressive and might be very helpful if you've to park in a very tight space that will make it difficult to open the doors. Minor irritations around this cabin are noticeable by their absence. We'd make the head-up display dimmable with the dashboard illumination. As it is, it can be somewhat overbright at night, but that's about it. Let's finish up front here with a look at cabin storage. Earlier we mentioned this two-part floating centre console which offers a huge deep lower tray big enough for bags or laptops and has a 12 volt socket and a USB-C port. A couple of further power ports, a USB-A point and a USB-C socket sit just beyond its lower edge at the base of the main dash. The top part of the centre console has twin cup holders and as mentioned earlier a 15 watt wireless charging mat. Because stowing stuff in that lower section leaves your belongings in open view and in an area where well, they tend to slide around, you might prefer to put smaller items in this big 10.5 litre glove box which has an inner tray. They're unlikely to fit in the tiny door bins which, though beautifully lit, are really little more than bottle holders. Kia's forgotten an overhead sunglasses compartment but there are ticket clips in both sun visors. OK, let's take a look in the rear, which ought to be comfortable given that the EV6 has a substantial 2.9 metres of length between its axles. A long wheelbase is usually the hallmark of a dedicated EV platform, but the downside of carrying a battery pack beneath the floor is often that it eats into the available cabin height, which is why so many electrical vehicles are, like this one, designed as SUVs.
Sure enough, once in the back, headroom is indeed in relatively short supply, an issue exacerbated by the fact that these rear seats are set a little higher than those at the front, and even more in this case because a sunroof's been fitted, taking further precious millimetres of ceiling room. This shouldn't be too much of an issue unless you're fairly tall, and the seat backs do recline to ease the problem for loftier folk. That higher floor means that your knees are slightly higher than they'd normally be and your thighs a little less supported. So bear that in mind if you'll be using your EV6 for longer trips. There are big pluses back here though. That wheelbase length we mentioned is longer even than that of Kia's big Sorento SUV, the largest car the brand sells in the UK. And the result is an almost limo-like standard of legroom back here. There's 990 millimetres of it in an area that would feel even more spacious if it was easier to slide your feet beneath the seat ahead. That's one factor explaining the roomy feel back here. The other is the absence of a central transmission tunnel, which would make it easier to take a third centrally positioned adult back here if you needed to. But then you wouldn't be able to use this centre armrest with its twin cup holders. These tiny rear quarter light windows are rather strange, as are the little USB-C ports tabs on the front seat back sides. And the fact that centre vents are missing relocated to the B pillars. You get bottle holders in the doors, individual overhead lights and coat hooks in the grab handles. Right, let's finish with a look at luggage space. Pausing on the way to activate something that on first acquaintance with this car you might spend some minutes searching for. The charging flap. It's been cleverly hidden here in the right hand rear panel and incorporates a useful charge level indicator, though the flap itself turns out to be somewhat flimsy. This little lower 250 volt 16 amp socket's interesting. The EV6's charging system has an integrated charging control unit, which, as with the Ionic 5, makes it possible for mid and top spec versions of this model to offer a clever V2L or vehicle to load function, which works via the centre screen's selectable utility mode and allows you, via an adapter with a three pin socket, to use the car as a mobile power source, powering up other things from its battery. Kia says that if your EV6 was fully charged, you could connect up a 55-inch television and an air conditioner and operate them both simultaneously for more than 24 hours. Though, of course, you wouldn't be able to move your EV6 anywhere at the end of it. Alternatively, it might be useful to plug in things like an electric scooter or a drone. Or use this feature for camping trips that could be facilitated by plugging in, say, a kettle a microwave oven, a mini fridge or an air pump. You could even use it to power another EV if a friend or family member who has one should find themselves stranded chargeless at the side of the road. Although the V2L port output is limited to 3.6 kilowatts, so it will only trickle charge. Enough with that. Let's finish with a look at the boot, operable via an electrically powered tailgate, which can rise automatically if you approach it key in pocket, laden down with bags. The tailgate rises to reveal what looks like a pretty cavernous space, but total capacity is ultimately limited by the high load platform. These huge battery packs have to sit somewhere. There's 490 litres of space, or 480 litres in this GT Line S model, thanks to extra space taken up by the Meridian Sound Systems subwoofer. That's somewhere in the middle of the segment norm. To give you some perspective, a Hyundai Ioniq 5 would give you 527 litres, but with a Ford Mustang Mach-E, it'd be just 402 litres. There's an underfloor section too, though most of it's so shallow, it would only really be of much use for a charging cable or items you'd recently run over. Kia hasn't bothered to favour you with bag hooks, and there's only one rather dim load area light. But you do get a 12 volt socket on the left, the usual four tie down points, and little recessed areas to the left and right so that you could easily insert the parcel shelf when not in use. Unlike the Ionic 5, you get a ski hatch too, so longer items like skis can be slid through between a couple of rear seated folk. Push forward the rear seat backs, and though the area won't be quite flat, it does offer up to 1,300 litres of capacity. 
Not all EVs in this segment give you extra storage space for the charging leads beneath the bonnet. The Volkswagen ID4 doesn't, for instance, nor does the BMW iX3. But you do get that here. If you go for this top all-wheel drive model with its extra front-mounted motor, this frunk space will inevitably suffer to the point where you get just 20 litres of room. It's not useful for anything other than, say, a slim laptop bag. Hmm. With more common rear-driven variants, then frunk capacity rises to 52 litres. Enough for a charging case. Kia has decided that the EV6 range shouldn't feature the smaller standard range 58 kilowatt hour battery pack available on this car in other markets and on this model's Hyundai Ioniq 5 close cousin, which is why there are no EV6 variants available for under £40,000. Instead, the lineup is exclusively offered here with the brand's larger 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. There are two drivetrain options though, a rear wheel drive model with 226 bhp, priced at the time of this test in spring 22 from around £41,000, or the all wheel drive variant with 321 bhp, priced from around £47,000. £500. As for trim options, well, there's an entry level air spec model for rear wheel drive customers, but otherwise, in the mainstream lineup with both powertrains, there's the choice of either GT Line or, as in this case, GT Line S levels of trim. Separately positioned at the top of the range is the top high performance EV6 GT model, which has all wheel drive and the 77.6 kilowatt hour battery, but uses more powerful motors, putting out a total 577 bhp output. For one of those, you're looking at close to £60,000. Make absolutely sure at the outset, though that an EV really is what you need here. The same sort of money being asked for an entry-level EV6 air spec rear-wheel drive model will get you the plug-in hybrid version of Kia's similarly sized Sportage SUV in decently specified form. A car which has a 38 mile all electric driving range or for not much more than the cost of this more powerful all-wheel drive EV6 model you could get yourself the brand's larger Sorento PHEV SUV, which goes up to 39 miles between charges, has the advantage of seven seats and costs from around £46,000. If an EV6 still seems to be a better fit for you, then you'll probably be aware that this car has a growing band of similarly sized EV rivals and you'll want to consider what else is on offer in this segment before finally deciding. The obvious first comparison to make is with the equivalent 77.4 kilowatt hour version of this model's identically engineered cousin, Hyundai Ioniq 5. But that car's rather different in design and around £2,000 more expensive, priced from around £43,000. Look beyond the Hyundai Motor Group for alternatives and obvious rivals include mid-sized EV crossovers like Nissan's Aria, Volkswagen's ID4 and Cupra's Born, all three of which are priced from just under £40,000 with comparable battery packs to that used by this Kia. For just over £40,000, you could also get yourself the base standard range 75 kilowatt hour version of the Ford Mustang Mach E. A couple of Teslas offer perhaps a slightly more premium match, but you'll need to pay more. Pricing for this EV6 in rear driven 73 kilowatt hour form, that starting point of around £41,000 we mentioned earlier offers a £3,000 saving over what that American brand will charge for the base rear-wheel drive version of its popular Model 3. But that's a saloon. If you're looking at an EV6 all-wheel drive model like this one, you might also be considering the Tesla Model Y hatch. But a dual-motor all-wheel drive version of one of those would be around £7,000 more. 
In the 40 to 50,000 pound bracket, where nearly all EV6 sales will reside, you could also consider premium segment mid-sized EV contenders like the Mercedes EQA, the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron, Volvo XC40 and C40 Recharge Pure Electric models and our current favourite, the Polestar 2. The Lexus UX300e also sits in this price segment, but that's not so tempting because its 54.3 kilowatt hour battery will only take you up to 186 miles. A BMW i4 starts at just over 50,000, and if you can push your budget up to around 60,000 pounds, you could also consider the BMW iX3, which has an 80 kilowatt hour battery. But that car's really more directly comparable to larger EVs like Jaguar's I-Pace, the Mercedes EQC, and Audi's e-tron Sportback, which sit in the 65 to 70,000 pound bracket. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it is an EV6 that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Kia has been with standard kit. So let's take a look at that now. Even the base air spec rear wheel drive variant comes pretty well kitted out with 19 inch alloy wheels, full LED headlights with daytime running lamps, keyless smart entry, power folding door mirrors, LED rear combination lights, auto headlamps and wipers, rear parking sensors and a rear spoiler. Plus, all EV6 models come with a Type 2 to Type 2 charger with a 5 metre cable as well as a Type 2 to domestic 3 pin socket charger. Plus, there's an anti-theft alarm and a range of camera safety features we'll brief you on in a moment. Inside with an Airspec EV6, you get premium relaxation seats trimmed in black vegan leather upholstery with front heating and powered lumbar adjustment for the driver. Plus dual automatic air conditioning, ambient lighting, a rear view camera, an auto dimming rear view mirror and a rear seat ski hatch. Driving stuff includes a drive mode select system with eco, normal and sport settings, plus navigation based smart cruise control and paddle shifters for the brake regeneration system. Media and infotainment across the range is covered off by a dual 12.3 inch driver display and touchscreen navigation system with voice control, Android Auto, an Apple CarPlay smartphone projection and a six speaker DAB audio system. Plus, via the centre screen, you also get seven years of access to Kia Connect in-car services, a world of live data. This includes real time traffic information, notifications of speed camera locations and accident danger zones, weather updates and points of interest info along your route. Kia Connect can also help you find parking spaces and direct you to charging stations. Kia Connect also works via a smartphone app. All EV6 models come with the Kia Connect mobile application services and these allow you from your phone to check your car's location and get an overview of the vehicle status, things like charge level or whether any of the doors have been left unlocked. Via your phone, Kia Connect will warn you if your EV6's alarm is triggered and a valet mode allows you to track your car's location and speed if you lend it out say to a valet parker or to your grown-up son or daughter. So all that comes with base spec, but most EV6 customers will want to move past air specification for this car, if only to get a choice of drivetrains. The most popular trim option is likely to be mid-range GT line spec. The car in this form upgraded with a more muscular GT line exterior styling pack, plus rear privacy glass, a UV windscreen, dual LED headlights with adaptive driving beam and a black finish for the 19 inch alloy wheels. Plus you get front parking sensors and the V2L vehicle to load system that allows you to charge auxiliary devices from the car's charging socket. Inside with GT line spec, the premium relaxation front seats gain two tone black and white vegan leather and suede upholstery plus power adjustment and memory functionality on the driver's side. The cabin also gains alloy pedals, deluxe door scuff plates and a wireless mobile phone charger. 
If you want more, then the final choice lies with the top GT Line S level of trim we're trying today. Here at the top of the range, EV6 variants feature larger 20-inch alloy wheels, automatic door handles, a sunroof with tilting and sliding functionality, and a smart remote-powered tailgate. Along with an enhanced package of camera safety and drive assist features, we'll brief you on in a moment. Inside with GT Line S trim, you get a Meridian premium sound system with 14 speakers and Kia's ASD or Active Sound Design system, which pipes a powertrain note through the speakers. Plus, there's an augmented reality head-up display, a 360-degree around-view camera system and Kia's clever remote smart pack assist system that allows you to stand outside your EV6 and park it into tight spots using the key fob. As for options and accessories, well, there aren't too many. You can specify a detachable tow bar. This car can actually tow up to 1.6 tonnes. And you might want to add protective liners for the boot area and for the no sections frunk compartment. Plus, you can have a boot area mat and a bumper flap to protect the bumper from scratches when you're loading. If you want to personalise the look of your EV6, there are brushed aluminium door mirror trims, body decals and a tailgate trim line. For the cabin, you can add in LED footwell illumination, LED puddle lights and velour carpet mats. Bear in mind, before you splash out on any of this stuff, that you may well be expected to pay more for your chosen EV6 paint colour. The only standard shade is this test car's solid runway red. Beyond that, there are various premium shades, which each cost £650 more. Kia also charges you more for a heat pump, a feature that some rivals in this segment include as standard. This maintains battery performance in very cold conditions, costs £900 more and is only available if you avoid entry-level trim. Enough with equipment and options, let's finish with a look at safety provision. Now, as you'd expect, there's a decent package of camera safety kits, starting with the usual autonomous braking system. Kia's being called Forward Collision Avoidance Assist, a setup that detects pedestrians, cyclists and other vehicles in close proximity. The brands developed this further with a Forward Collision Avoidance Assist Junction turning feature that anticipates oncoming traffic you might be about to turn out in front of at junctions. You'll be warned if that's about to happen and if necessary the car will be braked to avoid an impact. There's also an LKA or lane keep assist feature which applies subtle steering lock if you drift out of lane or drift too close to the edge of the roadway and a lane follow assist setup that keeps you a safe distance behind the vehicle ahead, combining with a highway driving assist feature to automatically adjust the car's speed to suit surrounding traffic. There's much more too. Driver attention warning constantly monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness, which, if detected, will prompt a warning to stop for a restorative coffee. Multi-collision brake assist brakes the car after an impact so that it's less likely to go on and hit something else. And an intelligent speed limit assist feature uses a camera to read speed limit signs along the road, displaying them on the navigation screen. Plus, of course, all EV6s come equipped with front and side airbags, as well as curtain airbags, and you get a central bag in the dashboard. An e-call system will alert the emergency services with your GPS location if any of these airbags go off in an accident. And there's also auto door unlocking in the event of an impact as well as ABS braking and electronic stability control to help you avoid one in the first place. Plus, you get hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, a tyre pressure warning system and ISOFIX child seat top tethers and anchor fixings for the outer rear seats. You get more safety kit the further up the range you go, of course. Avoid entry-level trim and your EV6 will also come with Kia's PCA or Reverse Parking Collision Avoidance Assist System, which will alert you if you're about to reverse into something 
or someone. Plus, you get the brand's useful safe exit assist system, which alerts occupants if they're about to open their doors in the face of an oncoming cyclist or a vehicle. There's also an intelligent front lighting system, which automatically dips your headlights for you at night. And blind spot collision avoidance assist, which alerts you if there's a vehicle in your blind spot when moving off or pulling out to overtake. At the top of the range with this GT Line S level of trim, the EV6 gets a touch of autonomous drive tech. Kia's Highway Driving Assist 2 setup that uses radars around the bodywork to adjust the distance to vehicles ahead and centre the car in its lane. On the highway, it'll even allow your EV6 to overtake autonomously. A click of the indicator stalk moving it into an adjacent lane. All you have to do for all these functions to work is to keep your hands firmly on the wheel. EV6 customers won't be short of cutting edge electrified technology. Kia says the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack in use here is the most power dense it has ever offered. And this car, together with its close cousin, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, showcases a first in segment introduction of an 800 volt electrified vehicle architecture, something previously seen only on uber expensive super sports EVs like Porsche's Taycan and Audi's e-tron GT. You shouldn't get your hopes up too much though for all the difference this might make when it comes to the all important issue of driving range. The best possible range figure you'll get from an EV6 is the 328 mile reading you'll get from the rear driven air and GT line spec versions on 19 inch wheels, enough to get you from London to Edinburgh on a single charge. If you want to get some class perspective on this, make sure you compare against a mid-size model with the largest available battery. Otherwise, you'll be comparing inaccurately against cheaper models with range figures in the 250 to 300 mile bracket. Some rivals can't even reach the 300 mile mark in their priciest forms. Cars like the Mercedes EQA, the Lexus UX300e and Volvo C40 and XC40 recharge models. As to what is comparable, well, a rear-driven affordable EV6 model's range reading is slightly above what you get from a rear-driven Tesla Model 3 and rear-driven versions of Volkswagen's ID4 and Audi's Q4 e-tron with similarly sized batteries. It also edges easily clear of what you'd get from this Kia's Hyundai close cousin when that Ioniq 5 model is fitted with its largest battery. And a rear-driven EV6's reading is about the same as you get from a Skoda Enyaq IV80 or a Cupra Born with a 77 kilowatt hour battery. It's even much the same as the range you'd get from two much pricier segment options, the extended range rear-driven version of Ford's Mustang Mach-E and the Polestar 2 in 78 kilowatt hour long-range standard motor single motor guys. You have to pay quite a lot more for something directly comparable that could do better. Over £50,000, for instance, for a BMW i4 eDrive 40 that could manage 367 miles. The all-wheel drive version of the EV6 that we're trying here also looks reasonably class competitive in terms of range. For that, Kia quotes a range figure of 314 miles in GT Line form, or 300 miles if you go for this plusher GT Line S version with its larger 20-inch wheels. That's significantly better than you'd get from a Mercedes EQC or a BMW iX3. And it's similar to the range you get from cars like Jaguar's I-Pace, the Polestar 2 in dual motor all-wheel drive form, the Audi Q450, e-tron Quattro or a Volkswagen ID4 GTX. Again, you can do better in segment, but you'll have to pay a bit more. A Tesla Model Y dual motor manages 331 miles between charges. For an all-wheel drive Ford Mustang Mach-E 88 kilowatt hour model, the figure's 336 miles. And a Tesla Model 3 dual motor long range manages 374 miles. For completion, we'll also give you the range readout figure for the top high performance EV6 GT around 252 miles. Let's drill down a little more into energy usage here and how you might be able to improve it. 
With this all-wheel drive 77.4 kilowatt hour EV6 model, we've been managing an average drive efficiency reading at 2.5 kilowatts per mile on this test. You can monitor this via little readout to the bottom of the instrument binnacle screen. That's a little below the spec sheet's claim of 3.45 kilowatts per mile, and it's worked out to around 250 to 270 miles of range between charges over the week we've had the car. Obviously, to get anywhere near the quoted official WLTP readings, judicious use of the available drive modes will be needed, starting with frequent selection of the eco setting available via this button on the steering wheel. Plus, ideally, you'll be regularly using the more aggressive brake regeneration options available to you via the steering wheel paddles, the most extreme being iPedal, which slows the car off throttle so dramatically that you'll rarely need to use the brake pedal. Activation of the car's navigation-based smart cruise control setup also helps eke out precious battery mileage. This feature using the navigation system to anticipate upcoming curves or straights on highways, then automatically adjusting the car's speed for more efficient driving. Bear in mind that, as with all EVs, range rises quite a lot in city driving. Kia quotes a city range figure of up to 416 miles for the all-wheel drive model and up to 459 miles for a rear-driven EV6 across all types of driving for maximum winter weather range you'll be significantly aided if you specified Kia's optional heat pump available only if you avoid entry-level trim. The heat pump compresses refrigerant under high pressure creating heat that warms up the flowing air through the ventilation system the climate sets up then needing less energy from the battery in colder weather. OK, those are the range issues we needed to cover. What about charging? Well, all EV6 models come with a Type 2 to Type 2 charger with a 5-metre cable, as well as a Type 2 to domestic 3-pin plug charger. Plus, of course, that 800-volt vehicle architecture we mentioned earlier, which will be very useful in future when super-rapid 350-kilowatt public roadway chargers are commonplace. In the unlikely event you were to come across one of these ultra-fast charging stations today, a 10 to 80% top-up would take just 18 minutes, with about 62 miles of range for every 5 minutes of charging. Kia recommends use of the Ionity high-speed charging network for this kind of ultra-rapid battery replenishment, but since at the time of this test in spring 2022 there were only 16 Ionity chargers in the whole of the UK, it's far more likely that you'll be using a more conventional 50 kilowatt fast charging station, which requires an hour and 30 minutes to charge an EV6 from 10 to 80%. Just enough time to recline the car's premium relaxation front seat right back, stretch out and take 40 winks. The brand provides owners with the option of a Kia Charge service, which gives you a debit card offering access to around 20,000 UK charge locations and lots of different charging companies. It allows you to simply tap the card on a charger and fill up. And an upgraded Kia Charge Plus tariff gets you discounted rates, reducing Ionity's street rate of 69 pence per kilowatt hour to just 25 pence, for instance. As you'd expect, the cabin central screen's EV menu can connect you through to find the nearest public charging station, though it doesn't necessarily tell you what kind of charging station it is, or even whether the station in question is publicly accessible. The screen's EV homepage can connect through to a useful map with a range bubble showing how far you can go on your car's current charge. And as you'd expect, there's also a screen that shows battery charge percentage and how far you can go with the climate system either on or off. In addition, there's an EV setting screen to set charger limits for either AC or DC chargers. If your EV6 has the V2L vehicle to load function fitted, you can even use the provided V2L ports to charge another EV, though because the feed is on a 3.6 kilowatt trickle charge, it'd take rather a long time. Right, let's now consider your regular home charging regime with this car accessed via the driver's side rear charging port, the flap for which opens to reveal the necessary sockets and an illuminating pixel square readout showing your battery status. 
Your home charging times will depend, of course, on your property's power supply and the capacity of the wall box you fit. But to give you an example, a 7 kilowatt garage wall box would require 12 hours and 30 minutes from empty to 100%, or just under 7.5 hours if you have the three-phase electrics needed to support an 11 kilowatt wall box charger. Plug into a conventional three-pin domestic plug and, of course, replenishment will take heaps longer, 32 hours and 45 minutes from 10% to full. Remember that your home's cheap off-peak electricity allowance is likely to be for no more than around six hours, so it'll be important to use the EV screen's set departure times and schedule charging and target temperature menus or use the Kia Connect app so that you can charge efficiently then not waste energy with excessive climate system use once you get underway. If you're charging your EV6 during a particularly cold snap, remember to engage the car's screen selectable winter mode which will help to maintain DC charging performance at low temperatures though at a small cost to driving range. On to issues of tax, aided here, as with every EV, by this car's quoted 0 grams per kilometre zero emissions CO2 reading. Of course, in the real world, the whole zero emissions thing is fictitious when you take into account the emissions impact of the power station energy generation needed to power this car. Its well-to-wheels emission figure actually works out at 37.4 grams per kilometre. But the government believes the EV zero emissions mantra, which means that there's no first year road tax license to pay, saving you a useful few hundred pounds. And until 2025, you won't be saddled with inner city congestion charges. More significantly, your company benefiting kind tax rating will be pitched at Group 1, which at the time of this test meant an annual payment from around £164 annually for higher rate 40% earners or from around £82 for lower rated 20% earners, which is massively less than you'd pay for a similar size and powered combustion engine model, even an electrified one. To give you some perspective on that, we'll tell you that Kia Sportage full hybrid SUV is BIK rated at 30%, while the plug-in hybrid version is BIK rated at 11%. Servicing intervals are rather over-frequent every year or 10,000 miles, whichever comes sooner. Kia offers flexible service plans to meet individual requirements and whatever package you opt for, it should be cheaper than you'd pay for a combustion model because all the maintenance is so much simpler. There are fewer fluids to top up and, thanks to the regeneration system, brake pads and discs last massively longer. If you're worried about green issues, you might like to know that the EV6 has achieved product carbon footprint certification and a carbon measured label from the Global Climate Change and Sustainability Consultancy of the International Carbon Trust Organization, Kia becoming the first Korean vehicle manufacturer to achieve this certificate. As for ownership peace of mind, well, you get Kia's usual comprehensive seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty, which is far better than the rather mean three-year deal that most other rival EVs in this segment offer. The same warranty period applies to the battery, which actually isn't very impressive in a market where battery warranties are usually a lot longer than that. As usual, though, with EV battery warranties, there's a minimum capacity caveat to this one, which means that any required repairs will return the battery to at least 70% of its original capacity. It's the same as the warranty caveat you get on a mechanically identical Hyundai Ioniq 5, which gets an eight-year, 125,000-mile battery cover package. What else? Well, there's 12 months of breakdown cover, a 12-year anti-perforation warranty and a 5-year paint warranty. As for insurance, well, you might be a bit shocked by the groupings here if you're moving over from a combustion model. Insurance groupings are high with any EV, mainly because brokers worry about the increased cost of accident repair with electric vehicles and the possible need to replace the entire drive system battery if you were to be involved in a collision. A rear-driven EV6 is rated at Group 34A in air or GT Line form. It's 35A in GT Line S guise. Any all-wheel drive EV6 rates at Group 40A and the top EV6 GT rates at Group 45A. 
Finally, residual values should be strong. Industry experts are quoting a figure of around 59% over a 36-month or 30,000-mile ownership period, which is just above what you get from a Hyundai Ioniq 5 and similar to what you get for an equivalent Skoda Enyaq IV. Few brands are able to satisfy both the affordable and the luxury ends of the mid-sized EV market, but Kia is planning to be one of them. This EV6 takes the technology that impressed us with cars like the e-Nero and evolves it to a level appropriate for a customer looking for a faster, more premium kind of mid-sized EV. In our design section, we talked about this Korean maker's aim to make a bold statement with this EV6, and that's not just about the avant-garde styling being served up here. Unlike most of its segment rivals, this Kia has an 800-volt electrical architecture, so it's already prepared for the fastest ultra-rapid public chargers. And you can even charge auxiliary devices from its battery. It's all rather impressive. The same technology is also available from the Hyundai Ioniq 5, and it would have been easy for this Kia to simply be a rebranded version of that car. But its character is actually quite different, and we'd suggest much easier for segment customers to adapt to. Are there issues? Well, some might wish the UK importers had brought in the more affordable, smaller battery version, and we'd wish for some more feel some steering and slightly more engaging drive dynamics. And there are a few areas of cabin trim that aren't quite up to this car's price point. Overall, though, the EV6 is the Korean brand's most accomplished car to date in terms of design, style and technology. It can equal anything on offer from the German premium brands, yet do so at a more affordable price. Certainly, if you were about to sign for something like a Polestar 2 or a BMW i4, the EV6 is a car you should try first. We think you'll be surprised at what you find. <laughs>